Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Ben and I'm a self-taught web developer who went from zero to paid full stack in eight months studying the Odin project. And today I'm giving you my opinions on a question I received and that is, should I be spending time on lead code or projects? And if you like this kind of content, please do like the video, consider leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel. Okay, so back to the question, should you be doing lead code or projects? And I think in short, it depends. They are both very useful and they both have their place. But if I was to pick one hands down, it would be projects. And I'll explain why. Before we jump into that, let's explain what exactly a project is, what exactly lead code is. So a project, in terms at least where I studied at the Odin project, which focused on web development, a project is a, uh, a distinct task that you're given that is generally focused around either learning a language or building something uh, in terms of web development. So in the beginning of the Odin project, in the foundations, you'll build a simple website. And then you start learning JavaScript and you will build some games. And then when you move on in JavaScript or Ruby, you build more games. So maybe there's a little bit of data structure and algorithm stuff in there, but most of the focus is on kind of functional learning around using a programming language to build a game. And then as you move on, you're building web applications, websites, where you're applying that knowledge that you've learned into creating function and features in a website. And the great thing about these projects is that each they're just incremental and they push your learning and your boundaries every single time. They're just tough enough that you feel like, okay, I've got to figure this out, but not so hard that you can't figure it out. But the end result of a project is usually something you can interact with, something you can play with, and something that applies to general web development, if, if that's the scope that you're in. Okay, it shows that you have competency in I don't know, building a shopping cart or uh, creating a form or uh, building a back end on a website. Lead code, on the other hand, I'm going to point to this definition here because I think it does a very good job, is one of many websites to train your ability at coming up with efficient algorithms to solve small theoretical problems. So they are exactly that. They are theoretical problems, very much like the problems you get in math class or physics, where you're given a short description of assumptions and then you have to solve a problem. In this case with lead code, it's just done with code. So they can really vary in complexity and, and the challenge of them. And I think that they are a very, they're flexing a different muscle in your brain. They're showing your ability to uh, think abstract, okay, and to problem solve. And this is also very useful in web development, but generally I kind of compare this more to like carpenter versus architect, you know, to, to be very crass about it. An architect's gonna understand a bit more about the inner workings or the mathematics or the physics behind something and that's where they're going to be solving these kinds of problems but they're not building something functional it's the carpenter who understands how to build that thing who's building the functional unit i kind of compare projects and leak code are kind of similar and both are very useful now when you're learning web development especially when you're a junior what should you be focusing on most there's a lot of attention focused on leak code because it is the criteria that is used by many companies to determine whether or not they want to hire you is whether you do well in these lead code style problems. So you've heard it a lot and you're probably thinking, I need to study lead code. I need to be grinding through and working my way up from easy to medium to hard lead code. And if I'm not doing that, then I'm never going to get a job. I don't think that that's necessarily true. Okay. A lot of people get a lot of pride out of solving lead code, uh, especially the mediums and the hearts, right? And they are very challenging and anyone who can do that hats off to you. Myself personally, I never focused much on lead code. I really didn't enjoy it. The one thing I did in the very beginning was look at a website. Uh, it was called Exorcism. So here it is here. Uh, it, it's kind of like lead code, but it's a little more instructional or it, I wouldn't say instructional. It's, it's more about teaching you how a language works through problem solving, small problems uh, and, and, and building small algorithms. So I thought that this was really good, especially when I was learning Ruby to just solidify concepts in my mind. So I, you know, I did the easy ones of this, uh, a couple mediums, just to help solidify things as I was working and I felt like doing something a little different. But in general, I think when you're starting to learn web development, focus entirely on projects. The projects are where you're going to solidify concepts in your mind, especially if you're focused on something like web development. You need to know how to build a website, a web application, front end, back end. You need to know all of these things and they go far beyond, very, very different from 
leak code, which is, you know, just focusing on a tiny, tiny problem. Whereas a web application, you know, you're going all the way from the request all the way through the application to a response. There's a lot more going on there. And understanding that is, is going to come from building projects, not doing leak code. And I think one thing we could look at here, uh, which would really help solidify some of my opinions uh, is, is Reddit. So there's tons of questions on Reddit. Should I be doing projects or leak code? And the answers here, I think, are, are very good. And, and this one is the top voted answer. This is exactly my sentiments here. Projects get your resume viewed. Leak code passes the interview. And I'd say that there is a caveat to this because not every company does leak code. The two companies I was hired at, FreshBooks and the company I'm at now, they didn't do leak code. There was none. The company I'm at now, they gave me a practical web development problem to solve, interacting with a fairly complex API. And I built that project in my own time at home. And that's what got me my job there. It was a practical application of web development. That was knowledge that I gained through doing projects, not through doing leak code. So there are lots of companies out there that do not focus on leak code. And there's a big debate out there as well on whether or not leak code is a reasonable um, assessment of somebody's ability to do the job. I'm not going to argue that someone who's very good at leak code is a good problem solver, but it doesn't test other things. Are they able to take something from start to finish? Are they able to execute? Are they able to work well with other people? These are things that a project is going to give you, not leak code. But this, this is true. Projects will get your resume viewed. And then if you're trying to apply to a company where leak code is important, then I recommend you study leak code. But don't go through your journey thinking, I have to grind leak code. I have to be able to do the mediums and the hards because you just don't. In my personal experience, it was not a truth for me. I am very happy. I have a very good job. And I didn't do a single lick of leak code for any of the interviews I did for uh, the, the jobs that I, that I have. Uh, and there have been a couple interviews where I did have to do leak code style stuff. And I didn't do that well in them because I just don't practice it. I don't enjoy leak code. I, I really dislike doing it because I think it's a waste of time. To be honest, I'd rather be building something practical that's going to be adding value in the world rather than just solving some random problem. But that's just me. I'm very results driven. If you are like that, then maybe you want to follow a path like I did. Focus on projects and then apply to companies where leak code isn't the gold standard. If you're the opposite and you enjoy problem solving, that's great. You know what? There's lots of companies who need that kind of problem solving abstract thinking as well. You're going to grind leak code and, and you know, all, all the power to you uh, if that's what you enjoy doing. I'd say uh, I want to end here that the thing that got me my jobs, I, I believe, is the, uh, the pet rescue application that I built. That was a project. I spent a lot of time on that, almost three months full time building that project in a Ruby on Rails, full stack application for a pet rescue. That's what got me to the interview in both of my jobs. Leetco didn't get me past the interview. It was, again, more problem solving uh, based on practical application in web development. Building stuff that's actually useful is what got me my job. So it really depends on where you apply. But please don't think that you have to grind leak code in order to get a job. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this down below? How do you structure your, your, your study time? Are you focused mostly on projects or are you focused mostly on leak code? My summary is focus on projects. They, you always need projects. There is nothing uh, where a project is not going to be useful for you. Only study leak code if you need to because the company where you're applying at uses it in their interviews. Okay, hopefully this video has been uh, useful for you and leave a comment below with your thoughts. I'd like to hear from you and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.